Hi there, this is a series of videos I'm going to do looking at what's up in the garden in February. I'm going to look at the conservatory in the back garden today and then we're going to do one in the front garden and one down at the community allotment. So, adventures in a small garden, here we go. These are the seeds that I've put on so far this year. What's come up is calendula there that germinated in eight days. It's phenomenal. We've got some rows there. There's some cuttings I took a couple of weeks ago. They were pruning back the dog rows at the community allotment and they had massive buds on. So I took some of those off and they've taken nicely. They've grown since they've been in there. Um, there's a distinct lack of roses um, and thereby rose hips. We were looking for some a couple of weeks ago, but we're in, in an industrial urban area, so it's no surprise really. But hopefully, we should have a good supply once these take and grow quite vigorously. What else we got? I think nothing really yet in there. Okay, up here, got lots of baby aloe vera. Uh, and there's some more calendula which just popped up in there. I obviously had a spillage, um, but strange as I'm studying it this year for a herbal ally, it just appeared there to me. It's fantastic, and also I think that's some kind of brassica at the back. So I'll have to pop those on in the next few days and see how they get on. Um, we've got a spider plant here, which I will just mention. Those are plantlets they need individually potting up. It came off a larger one that's up in Mum's room, and we got that for because they're really great at improving the air quality in um, a house, and Mum has lung issues, so that's why we've got those. In the lavin, um, in the jasmine here. I've had some chickweed pop up. It pops up in a few of the plants because of the compost that I use. It's another one we've been looking at this month in terms of harvesting for salads and perhaps stir fries. We're also going to be making some oil and hopefully a salve from that. So we need to get mooching around picking some of that. Round here. Uh, well, this is lemon thyme. I did buy that a couple of weeks back. Um, just potted it up in here. Look, so we're going to use it for tea. Ha <laughs> ha! It's irony for you. Um, I will put it in the garden, but I want it to bulk out a little bit more. Wait till conditions are a bit more favourable. Got a couple of little plants up here. This one is a custard fruit, which was brought over by my friend Sue from Spain. Got good germination on that, and that's gone through the winter. So, got high hopes for that one. And this is a lemon, which was a seed Sue also bought over. I've got a couple. That one's not looking so happy, is she? Uh, I did feed them all with um, the water. I washed the fish tank filter out and used the water for that, but she's still not happy. She needs potting on a bit more TLC. Hopefully we can bring her back from the brink. Down here... We've got some ginger, which I haven't potted up yet. I just pulled it up because I was dying to see how much root was under there. Did it a bit late last year, so I'm going to get an early start with that again. Cut some little bits off, put them in, and be able to use the rest of that then for cooking. Um, going to put it in a shallow. It needs a shallower pot as well for the optimised growing conditions, so I'll do that. And the same with this one, which is turmeric. More aloe vera, more babies. They need potting on. Over here, I've got some wormwood and a couple of plants given to me last year. This one I decided to keep in the pot in the conservatory. That growing tip probably needs cutting back and then it'll bush out a bit more, but I will get that in the garden soon. I've got here, now that is a red basil and down here I've got a green basil. Um, what I'm attempting to do, a bit of an experiment, is overwinter them because I had a friend who had a freak basil who we got through, was it one or two winters? So these are, see they're still pretty strongly attached so I'm hoping there is a bit of life left in it there so we shall see. And this was another bit of an experiment, um, the cheese plant. Well I do, I do, I am going for a jungle effect in here but um, 
also it does produce an edible fruit eventually so yeah another bit of an experiment it's a bit of Chopin for you there <laughs> right we'll go and have a look outside okay don't think no signs of any mint yet these beds are actually the kids but uh, I think they haven't really been looked after last season I think they got a bit bored of gardening um, it's a little viola which comes up all over the garden um, which has got herbal uses but I also use it as the ground cover we've got that's a little bit of lemon balm there look Herb Robert forget me not coming up there then ooh there's a nice little clump of plantain there more lemon balm and this is the main lemon balm patch coming up there I haven't cut these off I'll keep these on in the winter one for protection and two because I quite like the look of them we've got some wild strawberry there some wood avens which the root can be used as a cinnamon substitute so she'll probably dig quite a bit of that up this year and um, use that we should have a nice supply um, that's more herb robert this is a little oak it's my little oak friend herb robert there and some dandelion got plenty of dandelion coming up all over it's another nice little patch there more wood avens, more viola that is an aquiligra that's just starting to come up then we've got the marjoram and then we've got the golden marjoram look at that pink the pink on that growth is phenomenal really beautiful what else we got more dandelion more wood avens more marjoram this <clears throat> is a fig it was a pruning from the community allotment that did have root on so I've potted that up hoping that that's going to take that bud looks viable that one no that doesn't look happy but yet yeah, there's hope there yet got a little hawthorn that popped up and a cherry that also popped up and got plenty of shepherd's purse dotted around um, plenty of lavender I took some cuttings from the larger lavenders that I've got last year and we now have lots of little healthy looking plants through the garden we want a nice supply of that there's daffodils the daffodils are coming um, that is a chamomile chamomile doesn't like it in this garden um, so we have actually got some German chamomile seeds we're going to plant those up at the community allotment and see how we get on with those there there's lovely buds this is black currant look at the buds on that um, and we've got primrose there probably needs just a little bit of get that out for you get that out for you here we go uh, another lavender there's some savoury there she's not looking very happy is she she needs a bit of TLC uh, a bit of looking after see if we can get her back to health that's the Mombrisha there oh that's looking good right this is a gooseberry that's an eat off the bush variety that's got plenty of buds on so we should do well with that this year but they always do well gooseberries this bed is full of corn cockle which is beautiful um, the insects love it but it is very evasive so you need raining in don't you I'd probably dig most of that out and then have that along the back there this is a red currant that's got plenty of buds on and I don't know if you can make it out here this that looks quite dead this is a pot marigold which up until December was it was in flower in December it's only really been the last couple of weeks since the frosts hit that um, it's died back but obviously it's self seeded so um, we should get a nice supply of that 
We've got strawberry there, and that's an actual strawberry as opposed to a wild strawberry. I can see here this is the beginnings of cleavers, which is another plant that we're specifically looking out for this month. Makes a lovely spring tonic. Flush us all out. <laughs> Ready for the, the summer. <laughs> Um, this is the main nettle patch. It's coming up nicely. There we go. That's got a lovely pinkish hue to it as well. Um, I've got fairies at the bottom of the garden and cats. <laughs> um, this ivy I put in really is a late winter pollinator for the insects, but it looks pretty as well, covering that back wall. And apparently, so I've found out recently, um, does is used herbally, so I have to look a bit more into that. Okay, what we got down here? Oh, this is our uh, TP under construction, and get some willow from the community allotment, get that sorted out. I think it's more forget me not. Here, yeah, some more dandelion. Uh, ooh, nice patch of nettle at the back there also got this rose, the, the blackberry comes up here and this rose which was here when we moved in which is just a climbing pink rose which does look pretty when it comes out this is the continuous, they're tiny buds you probably can't make them out but there's plenty of them on there I've got oh, look at this aculegra it's probably a bit more protected here than that one over there Bet you're a bit warmer, aren't you? Beautiful growth on that. And this is where the cleavers usually grows. Well, it's everywhere this year by the look of it, but there we go. It's a little bit there. The Californian lilac. This is where the nasturtium usually grows. Again, this was going strong till that couple of weeks back where um, the frost killed it off, but you've got plenty of seed down there. And in fact, see that? There's a little tiny one there. Right, this area is a bit of a nightmare because I've got this horrible Lilandi eye look. Ugh, it's a rented house, I can't get rid of that. Um, but, so it's probably dry. Well, it is dry and acidic under here. But Feverview does come up here. There's a little start there, and that's a patch of bluebell. And a bit of Mombrecia. Um, we've also got the wood roof under here, but I don't think that's ideal. I want to move that this year. What I'm going to put under here, I think, is a juniper and some Solomon's seal. Oh, and that's some forget-me-not. Oh, look at that. It's a tiny little flower on that one there. And this is the main blackberry patch. And then round here, it's more of the same. <laughs> Uh, so that's that's a red currant as well. That's got some nice little buds on. This is another patch of primrose, and that's cowslip. That one there. Yeah. So we've got the same, the viola, and herb robert. Great patches of dandelion up the back there. Look at that one. Um. Okay, we've got the land cress, which that's self-seeded from last year, so that's fantastic. We'll have a massive supply of that. And also salad bonnet. This oh, is a lemon verbena. She's not looking very happy, is she? Um, I'm hoping she's still alive. She needs a bit of TLC as well. Uh, this is the ice plant. Whoa. Oh, look at that creeping buttercup. Mm, got plenty of that. There you go. Oh, look at them. They're like little legs. Uh, right. What else have we got over here? There's another. Oh, that one was. Um, that's black currant, say, so I got confused then because. That looks like the lemon verbena. This is blackcurrant sage, which again, that went in last year. It's looking a bit scabby, but hopefully that will come on because that is beautiful. It's got a beautiful taste to it. 
this is another current and more strawberry more dandelion <laughs> um, this is gooseberry which needs pr prune me he's saying I know I'm sorry I didn't do it in the autumn he needs a bit of looking after I've got the bay here that's established quite nicely um, scented geranium which again was going through I really thought it was going to go through till that frost hit should have taken cottons but it's gone now although potentially it could have a little bit of life left in it so we'll see um, this is the strawberry patch oh yeah I told you look you make that out that's flowering already phenomenal Nominal, you are an amazing plant. We've got the sorrel there, and more herb robert, more dandelion. We've actually got look, there is some clover coming up already. Um, again, I use that as um, ground cover. Just let that come up in an established bed like this. It's fine. And even if I'm putting something smaller in, you just rip a patch out and it doesn't bother it, it just grows back, obviously fixes the nitrogen in there as well. I've got more lemon balm, more herb robert. This is a goji berry, which I've had in here for years, it didn't do anything and it actually flowered last year. So I'm hoping for great things off you this year. <laughs> Another little lavender in there, another primrose, decimated catnip. Uh, this is my horse chestnut, which is actually the offspring of my very first tree friend that I grew up with as a child. So it's he's quite special. Um, actually, if you do look, you can see it there. There he is, look, he's smiling. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, we do need horse chestnut buds. We're wanting to make some flower essence from those, but I can't take them from him because it's not fair. Um, these are just general pansies. Um, oh, it's the grape hyacinths, look, coming up in there. So this is the, just the little raised bed that I grow in at home. What I'm going to do this year is put a bottle greenhouse surrounding this too prolong the growing period um, protect the plants from the cats and the squirrels and uh, yeah just extend the season really hopefully uh, got the garlic there I've got some sprouts this is the wormwood that I put in the garden um, and that's the that's the garden guardian of the garden got a bit of onion this is where the calendula popped up last year as well so that's self-seeded there so we should get a nice supply there we've got more shepherd's purse yep nettle which is self-seeded all over the garden which is fantastic self-seeded in here which is what i was using last year for pea shoots and broad bean shoots <laughs> um some red cabbage this is a kale russian hunger gap that one is, I do believe. Got sage, which looks a bit scabby, but that should come on this year now. This was a cutting I took off from one that I'd had for quite a few years that was just on its last legs. So I managed to get a cutting from that. And this is another lavender cutting. Look at that one. That's phenomenal. I'm going to put the potatoes in there this year, but I've got to protect that from the squirrels. Probably put a bit of um, chicken wire over it or something. And then this, how's she doing? She got some buds on. This is a little um, grape, which actually didn't do very well last year because when it had got the buds on like that, I think it was probably a squirrel came along and ate them. So, but she still seems alive. So hopefully, we should get a bit of nice growth off her this year, which we can put up, grow up the back there. So, yeah, that's what's up in the back garden. <laughs>